Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightside Tavern Film Festival. My name is Dana and I'm sitting here with Christian. He is a part of the film. Hey, let's play Dead Girl. Let's play Dead Girl. Can you tell us a little bit about your film? Well, um, Let's Play Dead Girl is about the Slender Man case over in Wisconsin, about the two 12-year-old girls that plan to murder one of their friends to become a proxy. And um, basically, uh, you know, I urbanized the story, made it my own, and, you know, it's been doing great at festivals. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, a classic horror movie, but at the same time, it, uh, you know, it's branching out to other categories like drama and everything, and it's been getting a lot of support in that, in that area. Well, that's phenomenal. So, um, did you have a hand in writing this as well? Is that what you said, or did you just yeah. direct, produce? No, no, I actually wrote it my, uh, myself. Uh, it was one of those things that I was uh, prep. I was on a set, and I was uh, actually doing a zombie film. And I was doing my friend's zombie film, Natalie Chow, who's my co-producer. And, uh, you know, I, was, I need to do a new story, and what could, I, what could I do? And then suddenly on the television, boom. The Slenderman case popped up, and it was, there it was. And it was, you know, it's something. It was like I felt it was perfect because I tell stories about, you know, growing up in the house of women, and um, you know, with my Roman Catholic background, and I was like, oh, you know, two girls trying to, you know, become proxies of the, some, uh, some sort of monster or something like that. I was like, you know, this could fit me. I could do it, you know. And that's basically what I did. You know, I put a lot of my Catholicism into into the movie. You know, uh, it's set up in like kind of like three chapters. You know, about you know like the beginning of Christ, wrath, and everything. And you know, and it talks about you know deeper rooted things about you know like uh, uh you know kids and how they understand religion you know you know you, you're always, uh, in my case you know I was always told um, you know oh believe in this God believe in this God and you're like where is he but why yeah. yeah like this and so you know it's like it's it, and it gave me an opportunity to tell those you know curious questions that kids have and also you know the extremes you know what uh, you know religion could bring you to you know like that and especially in these days and age um, that uh, the subject is so testy amongst you know Muslim Americans and everything like that and how they perceive religion so, you know, it gave me a, 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 a platform to talk more about it. Yeah, that's fantastic. It sounds like you kind of took religion and went a different way with it and kind of yeah. kind of pointed out the dark side of it and how it could, you know, fester into something a little more evil. That sounds incredible. So you are also being honored with the New, Jer the New Jersey Filmmakers Award. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank what does that mean for you? Oh, uh, no, no. It's a, it's a great honor. It's, you know, uh, I actually been in Jersey, in Jersey City uh, for about six years or so, and I tried very hard to be part of the community you know um, um, me and my fiance Cynthia Blandino um, you know uh, we spent so much time supporting the arts here in Jersey City and being very uh, supportive of j not just film but I mean the painters sculptors and er everything like that and um, we enjoy going uh, going to their shows or buying art you know and just supporting and just spreading out the the world you know the whole thing um, that you know um, uh, uh, this community especially Jersey City is known for uh, diversity and then right now we're going all over the city talking about you know the, the art should represent diversity too especially film you know we're a big av advocate of women in films and uh, you know I was in a, a festival a Jersey City festival and they asked me how did it go and I was like you know yeah like 95% of uh, male fil uh, filmmakers where are the women and you guys sometimes have where to they at? yeah where, 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 are they? where are they at and stuff like that but um, it's, you know, something that we're very proud of and w we try to encourage because, you know, once again, I'm also a Latino filmmaker and, you know, I, I, I grew up in Queens, New York, which is another diverse city. And, um, you know, I, I like to, like, have stories and watch stories also on television and the movies that, you know, have is that it's very communal of diversity. You know, I, I, I like, you know, because I, I grew up, you know, you know, with the East, Eastern Europeans and then go across with the Koreans and then the... Um, uh, all of South America and you know like that and that's uh, beautiful to me you know because it always gave me the chance to ask questions for them and, and build an understanding. Yeah. So the diversity that you um, kind of were familiar with growing up is that the reason that you started becoming a filmmaker was because you wanted to see more of that in films? That okay uh, the reason I started becoming a filmmaker is because of Rod Sterling, Twilight Zone. That, uh, I'm a big, I'm a big person, but you know he himself. You know every time he made a movie, uh, um, his, his TV show, just to put the Twilight Zone itself, um, he always made social commentaries. You know, like uh, McCarthyism and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, I aspire to be that type of filmmaker. So, and and that's what. That's what uh, triggers me, my soul, like that. And it's also, you know, a form to express myself. I feel like, you know, uh, uh, I like, I, I say that uh, all my movies are screams. 
screams of myself. I like that. Like this, you know, and, and you know, and just like Sterling and this Stanley Kubrick too is another person. Like this, you know, um, putting social commentary behind it of what's happening around. You know, uh, uh, go against the status quo. You know, and that's the type of filmmaker you know I strive to be, and I always get got inspired. From. Yeah, that's amazing. And you know what? I don't think that the social commentary versus the diversity. I don't. I think they go pretty hand in hand. So I think you're probably getting to do both. You get to reflect your community that you grew up in, the one that you have now, and also comment on social issues all at the same time, which is incredible. So, um, how many films actually have you made since you've been honored? Since you're honored with this award, I'd imagine there's a few more. Well, I, I'm, I'm known for uh, being a documentary filmmaker, and that's uh, uh, how I started. Uh, I also have a 12-year career in post-production, you know, Japanese animation, live horror. I've worked with, uh, you know, like uh, Takashi Mikes, um and other people. I also did a whole bunch of, like, uh, um, behind-the-scenes supplements for Blu-rays and stuff, so I got to meet all my heroes that I grew up. You know, the Romeros and all the horror people, Joe Dante, like this. And I got, you know, uh, I got to, you know, work with um, Roger Corman, you know. And so it's like, you know, it's, it, 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 it you know, I, I it, the fanboy in me loves it. <laughs> the fan, yeah, the fanboy in me truly loves it because I got to, you know, like all these people that I, I you know, when I was growing up and went to the mom and pop's video stores, you know, all their movies, the horror movies especially, I got to meet when I was older when I started you know and then um, basically somewhere down the line um, you know being an editor a post person like that you always stuck in that room and then I was like one day I was like you know I got tired I got tired of you know telling other people's story so it was like you know I'm gonna go uh, do what you know lit the flame in me and I want to tell my stories talk about what's important to you yeah yeah and then and basically I you know I set up and like a, a, a five kind of like a five-year um, goal <laughs> that I set yeah. and then um, basically I did um four films so far and everything and it's uh, you know one is a documentary and one is like a 60 millimeter sh uh, short and I, I actually got another one called flawed God which is about um, dealing with uh, a son dealing with schizophrenia with his mom and you know, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here at Brightside Tavern Film Festival. We're pumped to have you and your film. And thanks so much for talking to me, Christian. Good luck with the rest of. The Are, do you have any other film festivals coming up for your, for the uh, Let's Play Dead Girl or? Oh yeah. Um, right now we're uh, participating. Uh, I think it's uh, two weeks from now the New Jersey uh, Horicon. We got selected for them, and then the Asbury Park, uh, which got hold on to my onto my pants uh, short film festival. Well, again, congratulations with all of your success, and I hope you do well. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here.